The Her Sports Show, live every Wednesday on YouTube and every podcast app. Hello and welcome to the Her Sports Show, our weekly show where we bring you the latest news in the world of women's sport. First up, Team Ireland claimed silver in the under-17s Europe Netball Challenge Cup. They played against the United Arab Emirates in their final match of the tournament and the UAE won 65-33. A great result for Team Ireland. Over in golf, Leona Maguire finished 10th in the LPGA Pelican Women's Championship on Sunday. She was seven shots off America's Nelly Corda's winning score. The Rugby World Cup final happened at the weekend and the reigning champions, New Zealand, successfully defended their title. They defeated England 34-31 in front of a record-breaking crowd of 42,579, the largest ever for a women's fixture. The Red Roses were weakened early on when Lydia Thompson was shown a red card, but the game was close during the final moments of the game. This is the Red Roses' second time uh, defeated by the Black Ferns in a World Cup final. There was a message from Frankie Harvey to the Red Roses after their defeat. A letter to the Red Roses. I know you're hurt right now and are struggling to see the light, but please don't forget all the good you have done for the sport that we all love. You didn't win the final, but there's a little girl somewhere in the UK that watched her first game of rugby during this World Cup, and she has decided that she wants to give it a try. That's a win. There's a young girl somewhere in the UK that was nervous about telling people she liked rugby because she thought they'd all laugh. Now everyone is talking about how amazing you are, and she's proud to say that she loves rugby. That's a win. There's a teenager somewhere in the UK that stopped playing rugby because she couldn't find a team, but after watching the World Cup, she's determined to give it another go. That's a win. There's a mum somewhere in the UK that stopped playing to have children, but has dusted off her boots and gone back to training because she feels inspired by you. That's a win. There's a rugby club somewhere in the UK that's realised how incredible women's rugby is and is going to start up their own girls' women's sections. That's a win. There are thousands of people all over the UK proud of our Red Roses and know that women's rugby is in a far superior place now than it was a few weeks ago because everything you have done, that's a massive win. A great message from um, Frankie Harvey in, in terms of the rugby and congratulations to New Zealand and also to England in the Rugby World Cup final. Domestically in rugby in the Energia AIL this week, there was a big win for BlackRock after they beat the reigning champions Railway Union in a tight game 19-7 to claim the win. Suetonians beat Balancholic 24-12, UL Bohemians beat Cook 55-12, Old Belvedere beat Wicklow in 17-8. Be sure to watch out for the Hearst Sport Energy at AIL show as this week's episode we do a feature on Wicklow Rugby and their incredible journey so far. Tune in to the last episode of the Hearst Sport Energy at AIL show which was one of the best episodes yet and had record-breaking views. Over in football, the Republic of Ireland team will face Morocco today in an international friendly to finish their eight-day training camp in Marbella, Spain as they prepare for the World Cup next summer. Ireland played Morocco behind closed doors on Friday, but this international friendly will be broadcast live on RTE Player and on the news channel at 5pm Irish time. This will bring Louise Quinn her 100th senior cap for Ireland. This will be Ireland's first game since their win against Scotland, which qualified them for the World Cup. In basketball, Ireland head coach James Weldon has selected two uncapped players for the FIBA Eurobasket 2023 qualifying game against the Netherlands. Sarah Hickey of Waterford Wildcats and Kira Bracken of Lee Slip Amenities have made their move onto the senior squad. Head over to hersport.ie to see the full squad listed. On Saturday, Kilcair and Clon Bairn defeated Mayo to claim their fifth Connacht title in a row in the Connacht LGFA Senior Club final in Charleston. The team won the All-Ireland final for the first time earlier this year. The only goal was scored by Kilcair on Clon Bairn's Ailish Morrissey and the final score was 115 to 4 points. Donna Moyne claimed the Ulster Senior Club Championship by defeating St. Ergnat's Money Glass in a 111-17 victory on Sunday, despite losing a player to a red card early in the game. It's the 14th title in the club's history. Triathletes Chloe and Judith Maycomb have moved in the world rankings. Chloe is now ranked 4th in the world, while Judith, her twin sister, is ranked 14th. The twins have a visual impairment due to albinism and compete as paratriathletes with sighted guides. Follow their journey on Instagram at tandem underscore twins. In horse racing, jockey Rachel Blackmore led Captain Guinness to a strong round of jumping to take the win in the Fortria Chase in Navin for trainer Henry de Bromhead. That's it for the news this week. Stay tuned as we catch up with national marathon champion Courtney Maguire. So first of all, congratulations um, on last weekend's achievement. Thanks for being here. You were the third woman across the line um, in this year's marathon and you came first nationally 
with a time of two hours 32.50 um so just to start off I suppose how did that feel um I'm still not over it I don't think <laughs> uh yeah no Jesus uh far exceeded my own expectations on the day so um yeah it just all fell it, it fell into place so um yeah just just had a great day and I, I don't think I'll ever get over it <laughs> and that was your first marathon that you've ever run is it my first marathon yeah my debut and did you kind of expect to do as well as you did no I like I knew I had the training done I had like a relatively short period of training you know as far as marathon goes um so I think it was the end of August or the first week of September we decided to do it and the training from that point on was intense like you know I, I knew that I was fit going into it but I didn't think that I would do that well and what kind of um training and preparation did you kind of do first oh it was crazy um <laughs> it was okay. crazy like my miles um my mileage wasn't too big um so I had see I'm kind of prone to injuries um okay. so I was running four days a week and then two days were fully on the elliptical um so on the cross trainer and then the other four days there was like a long run which would be kind of typically 20 miles ish and then I had one 26 mile run and then two kind of sessions a week and one kind of easy medium long run um and then the doubles were on the cross trainer as well so yeah lots of work definitely and since you kind of decided to do the marathon kind of so close to it um, did you kind of feel nervous beforehand or were you kind of like okay no I can do this I was actually fine yeah I think it was the most relaxed I ever was in a race um I think yeah we didn't put like a time in mind it was kind of like just go out and just enjoy your first one and you know like whatever it will be will be um so yeah no I was I was really like just relaxed before it even the days leading up to it like we stayed up in Dublin on the Friday and the Saturday, um, me and two of the lads that I trained with, and we just, we had great crack, like, so it was grand, we had no nerves. And growing up then, were you, were you always kind of sporty, or what kind of sports were you into? Um, I, I kind of dabbled in GA, and I was always into dancing, um, so I did a bit of hip-hop when I was younger, and then majorettes um, in secondary school, but yeah I found out fairly quickly that I was useless at football like I, I couldn't kick a ball so um yeah they used to put me in midfield kind of to tire people out <laughs> so yeah no I knew I kind of knew then that I was I was able to run uh so I started doing it a little bit in um secondary school or in TY and the coach in school then was like I'll oh, go up and just try out the athletic club, club and see if you like it and um yeah just didn't turn back then and did you kind of uh, kind of just do like cross country kind of running in school and stuff? Or, or was yeah, it... we used to do um, we used to do cross country kind of um, like there'd be a few events a year. So it was kind of more so to get out of class than that. And um, so, yeah, cross country more so. And then I did a little bit of track, but I just found that I got really nervous before it um, okay. just because it's over so quickly, you know, um, yeah. I'd kind of get scared when the gun went off <laughs> so I think oh yeah I needed a chance to kind of warm up into a race so yeah the the marathon seems to suit me and then is there a kind of you have trained with a local club as well or was it kind of just true school that you kind of got into it yeah I went up in TY and joined Clamell AC um so Anthony Moynihan would have been my coach as a juvenile and I stayed with them for a few years up until college. And then when I was in UL, I ran a little bit with UL. It was it was more so kind of trying to balance the going out and running. So I wasn't taking it too serious at that point. But um, with the last two years, we kind of have like a group formed in Clamel, um, the Clamel distance group, we call it now. So we have like an Instagram and stuff. Um, but we meet up like every weekend and then if people are around during the week we'll meet up twice a week as well and uh yeah we just train together push each other on and all different abilities but um yeah we we have a good group going at the moment so it seems to be working and kind of with running it's such kind of an individual sport like how important is it to kind of surround yourself with those kind of people to kind of help push you on and challenge yourself 
or like you need you need a group like it's easy to on the day yeah it's very much up to you um what like what you can do is individual in the race but the training is like you need to have the training done and having a group behind you and supporting you and just knowing that like you know if you have uh, if it's raining outside and you have a horrible session to do and you know it's going to be tough just it makes a difference to have two people to go and meet and just do it together and be like yeah we're okay we're gonna just we'll get through it we won't die we'll be fine <laughs> so yeah it, it makes the difference and after this marathon now you're seventh on the all-time um irish women's list is getting further up that list uh, a goal for you now um yeah it's kind of crazy like when i <laughs> when you say that like um i i hadn't been expecting that like that before dublin but yeah definitely like i won't put myself under any pressure to meet certain times or anything like that but yeah it'd be it'd be a nice bonus like um if I eventually do get to do that and what are your goals kind of for yourself kind of looking like at the moment um well before Dublin we were kind of saying oh maybe cross country you know um but I think now we're just going to nip that in the bud because it's a little bit too close and it's a little bit too risky you know I don't want to injure myself and then have a few months out so um yeah we're looking at uh doing a fast half marathon maybe in February um so just try to bring my PBs down in the 5 10 5k and 10k and the half marathon and then we'll probably look at another marathon maybe next year what's your PB in a 5k oh god I don't even know my PB in a 5k I don't think I've done like an official one <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah no I think yeah if I could get like sub 17 I think that's like achievable now but it's a long time yeah. since I've since I've raced the 5k so yeah we'll we'll give it a go some proper ones and is there any kind of other marathons around the world that you'd kind of be like I'd like to take that off my bucket list or is it just kind of very new to you at the moment oh well Berlin would be class like you know it, it was only a few weeks ago so it'll be it'll be next year again by the time we do that but yeah that'd be a good one to aim for I've I've heard good things about it so um don't think I'll be breaking two hours but um <laughs> we'll give it a go never know never know um when it comes to kind of running in a marathon like how important is the mental aspect of it like I imagine it's like very crucial to kind of push push through the the toughness of it yeah I think like before Dublin I was listening to a lot of podcasts and stuff um about like you know like what you were talking about there um like the mental aspects of running and I think I got a little bit too obsessed with like trying to be what am I going to think about when I'm running (laughs) you know how am I going to take my mind off it but then on the day itself I think the simplest ones were the ones that worked for me um so like just counting to four just keep counting to four just keep counting to four don't think about anything else or just get to the next water station um and just telling yourself like you're able to do this like you have the training done don't Mm -hmm. overthink it and just yeah the last three miles then it was just telling myself to relax I, I I heard people saying that they dedicate every 5k to you know like a family member and stuff like that and that's a lovely right. idea but I just don't think I, I would have been able to do it they probably would have slowed me down <laughs> and then I suppose with the preparation for running a marathon how do you kind of prepare physically in, in that way like you know like fueling your body and um all that yeah that's another thing that I've been really trying to nail down um with the last few months so there's a local dietitian, sports dietitian in town, um, Evan Lynch. She's well known in Sport Ireland field. Um, so I'd kind of drop him a text or whatever if I had any questions and he'd be straight back to me. He's, he's great. Like um, even with iron supplements and stuff like that, like he knew exactly when I sent my bloods to him, like, you know, what I should get and what to take. Um, so that made a big difference. And then, yeah, just just making sure I had like um, fueled before training getting the protein and afterwards like straight away um just constantly eating throughout not being embarrassed about how much you're eating you know you could be with your friends and they'd be like you're literally eating more than my dad (laughs) you know the training I'm doing you have to you have to up the calories and not be afraid to do it as well and when you are running a marathon where would you kind of say a marathon is lost or won like what kind of stage of the bit do you think it's like required to, to kind of go up that gear 
I was saying to myself during the first half of the race um, that like 10K now, it's going to be a race. Like me and Anne-Marie are going to be sprinting this last 10K. But we kind of, I think we ran together until we had about seven miles left and I just felt good and just... I just kept pushing, but it wasn't, it never came into a sprint. So, um, yeah, I think with more experience, I probably, it's probably the last 10K, yeah, that you would be racing. And the rest of it then is just trying to stay relaxed. And you've just recently graduated from Yale. Um, and what did you do your degree in? Was it psychology, was it? Yeah, I did my degree in psychology. And what's kind of next for you personally in, in that kind of field? Uh, well, I applied for my master. I got accepted for my master's um, starting in January in sport, exercise and performance psychology. Um, okay. So it's, it's right up my alley. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure if I want to do it straight away. I might defer for the year, but um, that's something definitely to I'll be doing it in the future. Something I think I'd be passionate about. Is that something that really interests you, kind of the sports psychology aspect? Yeah, I think I, I kind of love even the we had a lot of statistics modules and stuff like that when I was doing my undergrad. Mm -hmm. and um the like kind of in more enjoyable modules around sport and stuff like that when we kind of focus on that I, I seem to really like love that so yeah. enjoyed studying it and um yeah I think I'd, I'd love to just do that as my job my passion kind of that's cool and what are kind of your hobbies and outside of um sport and running um I do a little bit of art as well um so yeah it just kind of takes my mind off things you know instead of training and helps me like I have a tendency to like need something to do the whole time <laughs> so um yeah it's nice to just get me to sit down at the desk and just work away on that and you'd pass a few hours with it so um yeah a little bit of portrait drawing cool and when you were growing up then what kind of role models did you have or did you have any kind of people stand out to you yeah, I, I think uh, Fanula McCormick is someone that I really look up to. Um, just watching her from when I was younger, like she's so, you know, like she, you wouldn't, she, she's not big into the media and she's not on Instagram or social media or anything like that. But yeah, you know, like she is getting the work done because when she on race day, like she'll dominate the field. So yeah, she's, she's someone that I really look up to in cross country and in the marathon. Yeah, there's definitely like amazing female um, role models when it comes to kind of athletics and running for sure. Um, do you think that that's kind of something that you're starting to see more in other sports as well, that, you know, female role models are becoming more and more, you know, recognisable and stuff for young girls? Yeah, massively. Like even with boxing, Kelly Harrington, like and Katie Taylor, just having them to look up to now, like years ago, it was unheard of really. So, yeah, it's... um there's definitely been big changes in the last few years and I hope it continues and is there kind of any advice that you would kind of give to young girls that you know are kind of shy or maybe you know considering getting involved in sport um but are kind of unsure of where to begin I think yeah just get just throw yourself into a club and just see if you like it and I know it can be daunting at first and for the first few weeks and you will feel like you're about to collapse if you start running at first but it does get a lot easier and you'll get used to it and um the benefits that come with it the friendships like the memories it's just it's it's all worth it in the end you like you, you love it yeah it gives so much more than just you know a bit of exercise yeah it's so much more than that it's it's just it means the world to me like and I just I'd love for all girls to have that kind of even if it's not running if it's football or whatever if you're better at football than me Jesus yeah go for it <laughs> but um yeah no definitely any sport just throw yourself into something and keep going until you find something that you really like yeah amazing thank you so much Courtney that was no bother. thanks Nessa the her sports show live every Wednesday on YouTube and every podcast app